Hello, this is Greg the Rural Economist and welcome to the Wild Edible series. This is Wild Edibles number 24. And today's episode is actually the result of a viewer question. So, Bill, I really appreciate the question. I appreciate the really good quality photos and the description of the plant. So I was, I was able to make sure I knew what plant you were talking about. Today we're going to be talking about Daisy Fleabane. But before we get into that, we got to do the disclaimer. There's a lot of things out there that are good to eat, good for you, and some of them taste great. There's a lot of others, however, that are not. Some things uh, can make you very sick, and some of them can even kill you. So if you're not completely certain what a plant is, don't eat it until after you've consulted with a local expert. Again, we're going to be talking about some medicinal benefits, so I've got to add this. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a master herbalist, I'm just a plant geek. I do not diagnose or treat any illness. So, when we're talking about the uh, medicinal benefits of this plant, uh, keep that in mind. Talk to your doctor or your master herbalist. Okay, now, uh, that I got that out of the way. First, let's, let's do a little bit of a, an old uh English lesson, I guess. Anytime that you come across a plant that has the name, the word in it, bane, bane is an old English word that means death of. Now, Daisy Fleabane got its name because of some superstitious thought that it would help, the dried flowers would actually help rid a dwelling of fleas. In fact, it was very common to take the dried flowers and to include them in straw bedding to help repel insects from the bedding. Uh, there's not been any proof to show that it would repel fleas. So, you know, that may have been just one of those things that they thought. Now, Daisy Fleabane. Oh, now hang on. The Latin name is, I got it written down, and I've gotten to where I add the Latin names to the title of the, the thing, of the video, is Ergeron Anus. It is an annual plant native to the United States. It has been naturalized in Central Europe. It grows fairly tall. Um... It really likes like roadsides, fields, disturbed areas, things like that. It is what people call a pioneering species. So it's actually one of the plants that moves into an area that's been mistreated and actually tries to help uh, regenerate the soil. So it's actually a good thing. It has been actually added into... Uh, like wildflower gardens and things like that because it's quite pretty. The flowers are really small. They're about, I don't know, uh, when they're fully open, they're about a half an inch in diameter or just a little over a centimeter. Um, it has a whole bunch of flowers on each stalk. They come right straight up out of the ground. They can reach like three feet, three and a half feet tall. It has two different kinds of leaves on it. The leaves are fairly venous. They're very fuzzy. And then, well, you can tell right there, there's two different kinds of leaves. So the leaves further down look a little different and then the ones further up on the plant look kind of toothy i guess you could say okay the only part of this plant that is edible is the leaves the fuzzy texture makes it where it's not very palatable raw so this is going to be one you'll have to forgive me that i'm not just going to munch down on because it's really fuzzy now you've seen me eat some fuzzy things in the past but they weren't as fuzzy as this Native Americans, especially uh, the Cherokee, have used this plant 
and their medicine for a really long time. The entire plant was used, dries, dried, and used to make a tea. It was used to treat um, like intestinal problems, menstruation problems, fever, and it's actually a diuretic. It's actually been proven to be a diuretic. Diuretic, of course, helps uh, increase urine flow. So it's a good plant to know. Now, it looks very similar to the daisies. As it goes, gets older, as the blooms get older, they actually, uh, one of the common names for it is old man's beard because it, it looks almost like, I don't see one that's older, it looks almost like a, like a dandelion, but it's all clumped together. It uh, can be, most of them white are white. I have seen pink and lightly purple. Some of the stems can be purple, okay? Now, it is not a true bane. Most of your bane plants, true banes, are quite poisonous. Um, wolf's bane and hen bane actually come to mind automatically. Wolf's bane's deadly poison. It's also known as monk's hood. So it's actually, even though they gave it that name because of the thought of the repelling of the fleas, it's actually not related to any of the other banes. There are quite a few flea banes, but this is daisy flea bane. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, send me questions. Send me good quality photos and descriptions. That'll help me out a ton. I'm honest enough that if it's a plant that's not in my area that I don't have information on, I'm going to tell you, I don't know, man. I don't know. Okay? So, I appreciate it. Get out there, learn about what's in your environment because you never know what benefits you can receive by stuff that's in your yard or in the field across the way. Step by step, we're bringing rural back. Bye-bye.